YouTube, what's going on? In this nice fall day, look at this, cloudy, cold, Colorado. We got the truck here at the house. My nice little subdivision. Well, actually, that's my parents' house, and that's my house. All right, so I've gotten some questions about what do you have to do to your truck to bring it out in the oil field? There are certain requirements and this and that. And what do you got to have to basically take an over the road truck and put it uh, in the oil field? Uh, a, you have to be ready. Don't do it with a new truck because it's very sad. I mean, I don't know, you guys can tell. I'll show you the polish is all getting eaten off the truck. It's, it's very sad. Uh, but the winds died down here, so I'm gonna do a quick video and show you guys what I've done to get the truck ready to go to get an oil filled. All right, so you have to install a wet kit or a hydraulic system on your truck. This is the switch for it. I put a Muncie PTO air shift. And you got the light, so it's engaged. Uh, it's running, and then obviously when it's off. But this is operated by air. And then you, so you got to supply air to this switch, and then there's a, a supply line coming in, and then the and then the supply line going to the PTO underneath the truck, and then these are my power and ground for my indicator switch. Um, one of these comes off the PTO. There's a little switch down there that tells it when it's engaged. So that's the switch, right? And you can see back here. This is where your pressure and your return line are gonna come out. So these are each one inch fittings here. Uh, this is your pressure, that's your return. This is your hydraulic tank. So two ways you can do this. I went with a 35 gallon um, Muncie aluminum saddle tank. And basically the amount of fluid, the amount of fluid is what keeps it cool. See, so there's a gauge over here. It tells me the temperature of the fluid. You don't want hydraulic fluid getting up over 100, 100 degrees. Really, I, I, what do they say, like 120 or 130, it'll start to burn and then it's not, loses its lubricating factors. Or you can run a, um, like a thermoflow or a hydro pack or something like that. So you don't have to have this big tank. But if you're gonna do something like an end dump or, or a, uh, a belly or not belly dump but like an end dump i think you can run a live bottom trailer off a hydro pack but there are certain applications where you need a lot of fluid those hydro packs only hold like five gallons this has 30 gallons of fluid in it and then i would recommend putting valves on the inlet and the supply so if you have a leak anywhere in the system you can shut this tank off so what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna get under there and show you guys um, the actual PTO system. And another thing too, I had a gentleman ask me, your deck height on your truck, your fifth wheel height, what they call it, your deck plate. Most guys are running uh, 24 fives. Obviously you can see I'm running 11 or 22 fives. A couple of things you can do. You can either get 11 or 24 five tires and come up another two inches. You can change the feet on your fifth wheel plate to raise your deck height. And there's also your leveling valve. So all your all the all trucks have this here, this leveling valve. I don't know if you can see it, but on the bottom side here, this is slotted. So you can adjust that to raise your height up, but it's only going to give you about two inches. And you don't want to go too far, like you don't want to overextend your bag. See how this is still curled up underneath? If you raise, if I slot that all the way up, you'll see this raise up. And you actually see it like overextend. You don't want to do that. So, my two trucks that I ran in the oil field all have 11 r 225s on it. You want your deck height, they want it to be at least 49 inches. And here's the reason for that. If your deck height is not high enough, and say you're pulling a trailer that's a single tank and all that weight will shift forward if it's leaning forward all that fluid will come forward 
and you'll be overweight on your drives all the time. The idea is to have it slanted backwards and get that weight up on the, on the, on the trailer, which sometimes can be a real pain in the ass. So let's get under here. I gotta get under here anyway. Show you guys, look at how sad this is. Look at, all this needs to be redone. Oh, I'm sorry guys, before we get under there, you're probably wondering what this electrical plug is for here, okay? This is a two pin plug and it runs your, on the trailer, you'll have a, uh, if you don't have it on your truck, on the trailer you're gonna have a centrifuge and it draws a lot of amps. It's got a, it's, you use it, put your beakers in to heat up your oil, to sample it, get the water to fall out, and then it's got a spinner in there. So that's what this cable is for. So you have your regular seven way for your trailer, and then you have your big two prong. And what I did is I wired mine directly off the batteries, and I'll show you how I did that. Hey Nick, pull the cover off for me. I've already, it's already loose. There you go. Oh my gosh, God. look at that dirt. All right, so this is my, this is my high amp, 150 amp circuit breaker, and it's waterproof. Obviously you guys can see the moisture and the dirt that gets in these battery boxes. This is the solenoid. And this is just like a Ford starter solenoid. Okay, so this runs off key on ignition. So when I turn my key on, the solenoid switches over and supplies power to my circuit breaker. So this high amp bus 150 amp circuit breaker is what's carrying the load. This is just switching it, telling it to turn on. So I got a solid 12 volts coming to this, a ground signal, and then I have my power supply to the amp to the circuit breaker and then out of the circuit breaker I ran my wire and I went back to uh, my plug. Hold on, just trying to put this back on here. What'd you do that for, Nick? Did you let that, bro? No, you did that, bro. Let it, let it come off. You're fired. So, all right. Now let's get under here and show you guys what we're doing. Do you want me to put this back on? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Oh. So I also wrap the exhaust in this in this header header wrap because it comes. You can see how it comes right out of the def box over there, the filter, and comes up over here. And see, these are my hydraulic lines. The big one is your supply. The smaller one is the pressure. And so above the Y pipe that I wrap in header in header tape or wrap or whatever, I put that heat tape. I put that heat tape on the hydraulic lines too, because I don't want the exhaust heating up the lines. Ugh. All right. Ugh. All right. All right. So there it is. This is the PTO. It goes mounts on the bottom of the transmission. It's an eight bolt mount. You have what's called a six bolt plate. You can mount your PTO there, or you can get a TG series Muncie PTO, which is gonna be an eight bolt and it mounts on the bottom. There's the indicator switch that runs up top to the air switch inside the tractor. Okay, and there's the air line. So when I kick it on, supplies air to this line, moves the collar over, engages the PTO, which then starts moving the pump. This is a Muncie pump. You see I built brackets that come off the back of the transmission. This pump is very heavy. Do not just put this on here. As I tried to order brackets for this and they don't make them. So you have to custom make them. And what basically what I did, as you can see, as I just came off with off the back of two plates of metal, I bought longer bolts to go in the transmission. And then I bought these threaded collars here. These threaded collars. And just made my own support bracket for it because this is just this is just aluminum this body is so you have this big pump hanging off the back of this pto and going down those rough dirt roads if there's not something to support this you'll crack the body i've seen that happen but this is the pump here and this is a you can't tell this is a plug i don't know if you can tell or not it's all muddy under here it's a uh, it's a max pressure of 3500 psi bi-directional pump. Nick, stop! Bi-directional pump. So basically, 
this will flow either this is actually flowing counterclockwise but this will spin either way you can spin it reverse and pressure come out the other side or spin it the way it is now and pressure coming out where it's at um, and this is a hundred and forty eight percent PTO driving a 27 gallon a minute pump and then and then it's just a matter of uh, running your lines and you can see so I ran my lines up here I came over the air tank and then we went back staying out of the way of the drive shaft and everything oh. I'll show you guys where I mounted my filter housing okay so this is my supply line coming off the tank it goes all the way to the back of the pump my pressure line comes out of the pump runs over here to this right here see this this valve this is a a, a pressure relief a PRV valve so if something gets caught if something gets caught in my product pump while I'm loading oil like a rag this is supplying fluid well it's got to go somewhere if it, the pump locks up it shoots it back it shoots it back and loops it back into the filter housing so that's my filter housing there I made a bracket and mounted it underneath the truck just to kind of give it a cleaner look so fluid goes out to the trailer, runs through the trailer, runs through the roper pump, or runs through the hydraulic pump on the trailer, comes back through and comes into this filter housing. And this filter housing has a pressure reduction valve in it, which slows that fluid down before it shoots it into your tank. Because if you don't have a pressure reduction valve, so that's your pressure relief valve. Okay, I don't want you guys to get this mixed up. That's your pressure relief valve. So if you have a blockage somewhere it'll bypass fluid so that you don't blow a hose or break something the valve that's in here just slows the fluid down runs it through the filters slows it down to a low pressure before it shoots it into your tank because if you send high pressure fluid into this tank it's gonna you know spray all over it'll cause it to foam up and cavitate and you don't want none of that so that's it guys um, there is, uh, alrighty guys, you're probably asking yourself, Chris, are you laying on the floor underneath your truck? Yeah, I am. I'm laying in the street. I don't care. Oh, I forgot to mention, I had to move my fuel tank on the driver's side forward three inches too, so I could fit that tank in there. So be ready for some customization when you go to outfit a truck, if you're going to do it right, you know what I mean? And you want to do it right. Because you would get out there on your own and in the middle of nowhere and last thing you want is problems. So I'm not going to lie to you guys. It's a lot of work to get one of these outfitted from over the road to hauling oil. Um, but if, if, you, if you like doing it, I would do it as a company guy before I would do it to my own truck. Because you want to make sure you like it because it's definitely a different kind of job. And it's really hard on the truck that being said the money that you can make for the miles that you run is really good right now um, I'm not saying that you're gonna make a lot more than what guys running over the road are uh, especially if they're hauling like heavy haul step deck stuff like that but the amount of miles that you're gonna run so I might only do instead of 2,000 2,500 miles a week I'm lucky if I do a thousand miles a week and I'm making the same money. So my rate per mile has gone from, you know, over $2, two to 250 a mile to $5 plus a mile. So is what it is. But the miles that you're running are harder on the truck. It's a lot more stop and go. It's a lot of dirt roads. It's harder. So that's why I say do it as a company guy. See if you're gonna like it, if it's something you wanna do. And if it is, then outfit, you know, outfit your truck and then put it out there. That's just my two cents on it. Peace, guys. I appreciate y'all for watching. I got to get off here and get this thing ready to roll. Talk to y'all later.